So this is my buddy's 2006 Kawasaki 650 Brute Force. Awesome machine. Uh, I've used it a bunch of times going up north, uh, quadding with our friends. There's about a dozen of us that go. Um, problem is this year we've got a dead cylinder. So when it was running, all of a sudden it started uh, bogging down and uh, brought it into another shop and they grabbed the front exhaust here and it was cold and the back exhaust was hot. So I can borrow it again. I got two weeks. I got to pull the engine and figure out why it's not running. Um, you can, these cylinders pop off so you don't have to rip the whole engine apart and then your uh, cylinder head and then your um, valves on top of that so it could be a valve could be a piston could be fuel or um, uh, we won't know for sure until we do a compression test that's number one I'm gonna pull the engine out regardless because it's been sitting here and this is the oil that's laying underneath it so it still runs I think just seals are leaking and sloppy so we're gonna put some new seals in it and um, we're gonna start with a compression test now I got a compression tester, but the uh, spark plug is a lot smaller than the uh, compression tester. So I'm just going to take an old spark plug and knock out the ceramic piece and make this fit my compression tester. I want to make sure that it's compression and not fuel before we get too deep. So here we go. I cut the end off of the, I got the ceramic part out and uh, cleaned up the tip. And uh, I'm going to try and braise this onto here like this and I'll have my adapter. Complete rebuild now. I'm gonna start by taking this air cover off on the side here. You can see your belt in behind there. Uh, we're gonna take this air breather off here, and that's just a couple screws at the at the one at the front here, one at the back, and then disconnect the pipe at the front where it sucks, and then your carbs on the top there. That'll give us some room to. Uh, Look at what else has to come off. We have to take the exhaust off and um, all the wiring and stuff, of course. Uh, and once we get a little deeper, we'll uh, show you what we run into. Taking the plastics off, pretty straightforward. Now we can get out our exhaust. We're gonna take the exhaust off on both cylinders at the back here and just leave it all in one piece with the muffler attached, bolt here, bolt there. See if we can take that whole thing off as a unit. You have to take the one clamp off that goes to the front pipe and take the back muffler off on its own and then you can uh, guide her that and jimmy that front pipe out. I think we'll take the carbs off. I don't think we have to unhook anything. We just take the carbs off, uh, one hose off of each head. We just take the carb assembly and lift up and put it to the front. Here we go. Once the air boxes and the carbs are uh, off, it's a little less daunting. You can just take the two clamps off right here and just flip the throttle uh, assembly up. You don't have to disconnect a whole lot. Then it's a matter of unplugging your sensors. So there's one down here. Um, this this assembly on the on the front here is all sealed. So just follow the wires up. It goes up underneath. Um, the front here, these little clips, and just unplug them. Uh, there's one on the starter. You gotta take your positive off the starter right back here. And then um, on the other side here, pretty straightforward. There's a couple of uh, vent lines that you have to disconnect. And you can mark them, but if you don't disconnect them out of the holders, they really only go back in one spot. And they all do the same thing, so uh, disconnect your uh, belt drives and fuel off of your carb. There's two wires on your carb that you have to disconnect. And then um, your water lines here, uh, it's one bolt on the bottom, it's an 8 mil or a 5 16 and just, it's tight because of this o-ring. But if you pop it back and stick the screwdriver in here, you can, you can wiggle that out of the head. Now all that's left is uh, one more sensor down here, and then your drive shaft. 
Now the drive shafts, there's nothing that holds them in other than spring pressure. So this collar at the front here slides, you can just yank that back. And I just disconnected it there, see how that collar slides. So now the front's disconnected. Uh, take your mounts loose uh, here, here. Um, to take this bolt right out and then there's one at the front as well and then this back drive shaft is also able to slide but without the engine loose there's not enough room to slide it off the shaft so once we get that far we'll pull the engine out uh, the engine comes out the front this way and then towards the uh, left footboard so here we go so there's also a coolant hose here, I forgot to tell you about, make sure you got the green pan underneath. Um, once the mounts are ready, are loose, you're ready to pull it out. So it's Monday morning, I don't know how much it weighs, I imagine it weighs a uh, hundred and a half or so. Let's see if I can still do it without getting another hernia. That would be number four. The doctors are getting kind of sick of me, I think. That back drive shaft off. Check, make sure everything's disconnected. Don't put your legs. I blew my head gasket on my water or pressure washer. I have to clean this one with brake clean so I can pull the cylinders and the heads off while I'm waiting for a head gasket for the my Briggs and Stratton. But uh, should be all right. It's not that dirty. I wish I could have cleaned it before I dug into it but here we go so this is why the oil was leaking you can see that that drain plug is on an angle whoever did the last oil change cross threaded it so there's no there's no leak in the gasket here it's all running out of the oil pan you can see the I backed it off of here just to see but uh, yeah we'll have to see if we can fix those threads because that's kind of important <laughs> all of it will be for nothing if we don't fix this because Running through the mud, you don't know you have no oil, and pop goes your piston. I'm going to take the four uh, bolts off, take your pull cord off, you can see a nut right here. In that little slot here, you see your alternator underneath, and there's marks on the alternator. There's a little T and an F for your front cylinder, and there's a little T and an R for the rear cylinder. What we want to do is put it to the F, and now your valves are at uh, top dead center, and when you're on the R, the valves are at top dead center for the rear. What this does is take all the tension off of the valves, now you can pull your valve cover off, and uh, this prevents bending the valves. If there's tension on it, you can, if you torque it, take it off, what it does is bend the valves or wreck your rocker. So again, you want to line up the F for the front, and then you want to put the R on for the rear cylinder. We're going to start with the rear here and uh, I put some stuff inside the uh, air breather for the carbs there just to keep it clean uh, so I could wash it off. I just used the paintbrush and uh, some brake cleaner and bar saw and that worked really good. So here we go. So I have the T and the F lined up but my uh, marks on the KAC here don't line up 100%. There's two on the side and there's an arrow pointing up and the two are supposed to be level with the crankcase. So I took the other valve off too and it's not it's not right either. So I'll have to look into that and see whether the chain skipped the tooth or what's going on there. Um, but uh, your tensioner, we're going to take the tensioner off. You have to back that off all the way. The reason for that, I don't know if you can see in there or not, it's a ratcheting tensioner. So it doesn't, it doesn't go back and forth. It's when the chain loosens, it just keeps coming farther out. If you take this tensioner off halfway and then try to tighten it again, what happens is there's way too much tension. You'll break the tensioner on it here. So take it right off and then we got to pull the bolt out here, pull the spring out. Put the tensioner back on and like release the ratchet afterwards and then put the tension on. So we'll take that off and then take the chain off and uh, pull the camshaft out and then get ready to uh, pull the head off. Here we go. So we can pull our tensioner out just out of the back here. That'll give us some slop on the chain. And we can take our camshaft and just lift it out. Now these are weights that uh, when it's at a low RPM come out and it actually advances the uh, exhaust valve a bit so that 
uh, it has lower compression when it starts and it turns over faster allowing it to start better. So we can pop the four head bolts out here, the one on the on the end here, and then we can pop the head off so we can take a look at what's going on underneath there. I'm just cracking loose. I'm not a big fan of using impacts on aluminum. Just quarter turn, and all the way loose. It keeps your head from warping. Careful of the washers that come with it. And just crack that back and forth, try to get that out. Coolant comes out of here. This little transfers the coolant from the bottom to the top. That gasket's still in good shape. Okay, just these two bolts here and this one on the side. And the cylinder can come off. And take a look at our rings and the piston. And that's as far as I'm going with this one. The bearings on the crank are all fine, I'm sure. Now the rings are kind of sloppy in the grooves. Put some new rings on it, put a new oil ring on it. Cylinder looks okay. Probably hone it and put it right back in again. Beautiful. So follow a variety of projects that include conversions and repairs to anything from Ferraris to chainsaws. And check out the Tape Boss, my newest invention that's coming to market. And remember, if you're not filthy, you're not rich.